Hey guys, how's it going? I want to talk about uh, the time of Jacob's trouble, which uh, a lot of futurists will attribute to the seven year tribulation. And I want to show you here that Robert Breaker's video, he has it written up here, the time of Jacob's trouble, and his uh, teaching of the end times part three of the tribulation period. And he mentions Jeremiah chapter 30, verse seven, and he reads it, the time of Jacob's trouble. And he says that has to deal with the seven year tribulation. You can also see that he has attributed Daniel's 70th week with the tribulation. And both of those are false. Um, I've talked about Daniel's 70th week, but I don't think that I've really talked about this time of Jacob's trouble verse. And so I just want to show that on study light, we'll look at, I want to look at Calvin's commentary. That he says the prophet goes on in this verse. Uh, well, let's see here. Let's look at Jeremiah chapter 30 verse seven, I guess. First, I'll uh, get rid of all this. Okay, it's working a little slow here. See, I don't know why it's doing this. Yeah, now it's not responding. Okay, there we go. Now it's gonna work, maybe. I think it's just because I'm recording the video. Um, for some reason it's going a little slow, but oh, come on. This is, okay, it's starting to get there. Get rid of all this stuff. It's maybe the first time I've opened up this eSword on the new computer, so. Go to Jeremiah chapter 30, verse seven. Jeremiah 37, alas, for that day is great, so that none is like it. It is even the time of Jacob's trouble, but he shall be saved out of it. The thing is, so that none is like it. So, um, Calvin's commentary says the prophet goes on in this verse to describe the grievousness of that punishment for which the people felt no concern, for they disregarded all threatenings as I have already said, and had now for many years hardened themselves so as to deem as nothing so many dreadful things. This sin was the reason why he dwelt so much on this denunciation and exclaimed, Alas, great is that day, great is to be taken for dreadful. And he adds, so that there is none like it. It was a dreadful spectacle to see the city destroyed and the temple partly pulled down and partly consumed by fire. The king with all the nobility was driven into exile his eyes were put out, and his children were slain, and he was afterwards led away in a manner so degraded that to die a hundred times would have been more desirable than to endure such indignity. Hence the prophet does not say, without reason, that that day would be great, so that none would be like it. And he, he said this, um, to shake away the torpidity of the people, for they thought that the whole city which God had chosen for his habitation could not fall, nor the temple perish. He further says that it would be a time of distress to the people, but at the end of deliverance from his distress, we now then, or from this distress, we now then see the design of the prophet in these three verses. There will be no lecture tomorrow on the account of, okay, whatever. Anyway, he attributes the time of Jacob's trouble to what happened um, thereafter, I think when, um, Jerusalem went into captivity. Nebuchadnezzar. Um, I'm not so brushed up on the history of you know the Old Testament and everything, but that seems to be what everybody, a lot of people are saying here. Okay. Adam Clark. Oh no, I just clicked on something else. Uh, anyways, it has to do with what already happened in the past. And some people might say... Uh, well, it says that the day is so great that there's none like it. And, you know, they might say, well, there's been worse things that have happened or whatever. Well, it's a figure of speech. And all that it means is that the day is going to be that, you know, they're going to go through a really, really terrible time, which they did. And people will say, well, I don't believe it's a figure of speech. I want to take it 100% literal. Well, then that's what's going to get you into error. It doesn't say anything about a seven-year tribulation. Daniel's 70th week was already fulfilled. Jesus confirmed the covenant. And 
there's no reason to believe that there's any kind of a gap between the 69th week and the 70th week and I guess a week and in that sense is seven years but all the weeks you know happen consistently one after the other like they should I mean there's no reason to believe any other any other way except for people who have added to scripture and somehow have you know came up with this system that is easy for people to accept um, but to try to use this as some kind of a proof seven year tribulation is completely false and the seven year tribulation is you know a misunderstanding of Daniel's 70th week it's a misunderstanding of the book of Revelation and then they take all these other verses out of context and try to use them as proof texts you know, the Adam Clark, he says, When the Medes and the Persians with all their forces shall come on the Chaldeans, it shall be the day of Jacob's trouble, trial, dismay, and uncertainty, and he shall be delivered out of it. The Chaldean Empire shall fall, but the Jews shall be delivered by Cyrus. Jerusalem shall be destroyed by the Romans, but the Israel of God shall be delivered from its ruin. That happened in the past. And then, you know, there's this thing called double fulfillment prophecy, which I used to believe, but I think that it's nonsense. And they'll try to use verses to prove that. It's something that I got to go over. And um, they'll say, well, yeah, this was speaking of something that happened in the past, but it also has a double meaning of, you know, something prophetic in the future. <laughs> and, uh, you know, most things, if they were a type or a shadow of anything, it's basically they were a type or a shadow of Christ. And, you know, the book of Hebrews explains that to us. That kind of teaching is dangerous where we can say that anything has like a prophetic, you know, double fulfillment. And uh, that's where you come up with this Peter Ruckman and, and teachings like that where they just say whatever the off-the-wall stuff they want and just people just go along with it. But the main point of this is that the time of Jacob's trouble was... Uh, the day of the capture of Babylon, or you know when Nebuchadnezzar uh, you know, came there, killed the king. That's what I'm getting out of this. So, need to just drop the idea that this has anything to do with the future seven-year tribulation. And if you if you think you know it's so terrible that there's some, none like it. You just have to realize it's a figure of speech. Okay, it's not a lie. I'm not saying that the scripture is a lie. And I'm just understanding it as it's meant to be understood. There's lots of figures of speeches in the scripture. And, you know, it's an exaggeration. You know, but it is. it was a very terrible time. So, I mean, it's like, it's not that far off. But, yeah, we've had wars and stuff. Uh, you know, we've had Hiroshima and, and terrible things. And, and... You know, they had the Holocaust as far as the Jews go and stuff, but still, uh, it's just a figure of speech, okay? It has nothing to do with seven-year tribulation. God bless.